worship. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord this morning, wherever you are. Where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. Musicians, please be ready uh, at the altar call to come back up. Uh, would everybody else please turn with me to Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Uh, just to let you know, um, the law allows people that are uh, vital to the internet uh, uh, production going out to be together, not more than 10. So that's what we have here right now. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of people here, but I know there are a lot of people watching online right now. And I just want to tell you, thank you and God will bless you. For setting time aside for the Lord today. Uh, a few announcements. Uh, while you're watching online, please send in your prayer request. You can not only send in your prayer request, uh, but this week, um, I, I understand you may have a lot of time at home. You may have some situations going on around the house that uh, draw your attention uh, to, to, to different facets and different things. But I'm going to ask you to please do something. Please take time this week and study just the first two chapters of the book of James. Just take that time and study the first two chapters of the book of James. I think that you will absolutely enjoy that. And that will be our devotion this week. Study the first two chapters of James. And also, even though we cannot be pers in person at church together, we miss that togetherness. Please, call your brothers and sisters. Every day, write down one brother or sister that you call. And then call somebody different the next day. And then somebody different the next day. So you don't repeat yourself. But then everybody gets contacted. Ask everybody how they're doing. Check up on them and pray for them. And discuss what you're studying in James chapter 1 and 2. And that would be very, very appreciated. Um, the YouTube channel that's to be loaded up after this. Uh, just type in Stelina White. If you don't know how to spell that name, I don't either. I'm just kidding. She's my wife. S-T-E-L-L-A-N-I-A. Stelina White. And that's uh, the YouTube channel. We'll get that changed to Solid Rock, but we were kind of loading that up in a hurry. Um, that's the announcements I have so far. But uh, I also wanted to make another one. We are planning on opening back up uh, when this is over with, when, the, when this uh, mandate goes out of effect. And that will be our first Sunday will be Easter Sunday. That will be our first Sunday back. We're going to have a sunrise service at 730 that morning. And then we're going to have a breakfast and then we're going to have a Sunday morning Easter service, and after which we're going to have uh, an Easter egg hunt from 0 to 5 on one side and from 6 to 12 on the other. And it's just going to be an absolutely wonderful time in the Lord. And I really want us to take this time to think about how many times we've neglected to be in the house of the Lord when we could be. And now we can't be, and many of you want to be here. And I just want that to sink in, that we, when we neglect things, uh, not good things happen. And sometimes the Lord will allow things like this to happen, these band-aids that keep us out of the house of God. Sometimes the Lord will allow that to happen to kindle that fire within us to be in the house of God when the doors are open. So please, pray for one another and use this time to draw closer to God. Uh, Psalm 23. I've entitled this message, God is good, because he really, really is. Uh, if you have Psalm 23, go ahead and open your Bibles and I want to say good morning to all those that are out there. And um, I know you have prayer requests. And maybe uh, you can just take just a moment to uh, look to the people that are at your left or your right and, and ask them what uh, they would like for you to pray about. And then they can do the same thing. Uh, for those that are here, uh, I understand you may have prayer requests, and I do too. And I just want you to take just a second and, and think about those prayer requests. Because the Bible says we have not because we ask not. So let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. Heavenly Father, you know each request that everybody has that's watching on a screen right now, that everybody has that's right here in person, uh, that we heard about uh, on outreach this morning, we ask you, Lord, to grant these in your time and grant these in your way. And Lord, we just ask you to give us the patience uh, that, that we need through this time because you said when we have the patience uh, and when that patience has its perfect work, that we will be blameless. So, Lord, let us be patient with one another. Uh, let us love one another like never before. And, Lord, let us commit ourselves in this time that we can be growing in you. Let us not waste it with different projects, this and that. But, Lord, let us grow in you every single day. Just having this time where we're not distracted. So many of us are not distracted by certain things at work. Lord, let us keep our minds on you constantly. 
Lord, we thank you for this time this morning. We thank you, Lord. And we, we thank you for your love and your power and your peace. We ask you to bless Brother Matt that's in the hospital right now. We ask you to bless those that are sick and affirmed. Lord, we ask you to raise them up. And we ask for your will to be done above all things. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Psalm 23. Now this is a psalm that is mainly used at funerals. And it's mainly used at funerals uh, uh, because uh, of, of verse number 4. And it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Well, when it mentions death there, people say, Oh, well, this is a great uh, scripture for funerals. Which it is a good scripture for funerals. But this is a living scripture. Uh, David the psalmist, when he wrote this scripture, uh, it, it, was, it was and is a living scripture that, that each one of us can apply every day. And when we keep our minds on the Lord, the Bible says in Isaiah, he'll keep us in perfect peace. So when we think about that, look at Isaiah. And I want to go over about three points today. That God is our shepherd, number one. Amen. Uh, that God is our friend, number two. And that God is our host. And you'll see that this passage, just six verses, takes those three sections. So I, I love the way David refers to God in this. And I'm going to read the whole psalm and then we're going to go back. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Hallelujah. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Hallelujah. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Not a little bit of evil. Not some. I will fear no evil. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Why is that? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Whew, praise God. Hallelujah. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Church, I want to give you some encouragement today. I want you to know that God has not forsaken us. God will never fail us. He is right here, right now. And he is exactly where you are right now. Oh, just take a moment and soak him up. Feel his presence. Feel the Holy Spirit put his wonderful arms around you, holding you in this time of trouble. Let me tell you something. The Bible says he is an ever-present help in time of trouble. What a mighty God we serve. Give him a hand of praise wherever you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank the Lord for it. Hallelujah. The first part of the, uh, 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 of, of the sermon today, I want to deal with God being a shepherd. Um. Sheep don't necessarily take care of things very well when left to their own devices. Um, sheep will wander and sheep will go astray. Sheep are the only livestock that require as much attention as they do. Uh, if you put sheep in this room right now um, and you can try to get behind them and herd them out an open door, uh, they most likely will not go. However, if you get one sheep to go out the door, all the rest of them will, even if it's a cliff. That's why shepherds have to be so vigilant. There have been many accounts of sheep when the shepherds step aside for a little bit, when the shepherd steps away, that the sheep, one sheep will jump over a cliff, another one will fall, and another one, another one, another one, and it will continue like that. Sheep need a shepherd. Amen. Many, many times in the Bible, God's people are referred to as sheep. Sheep cannot really defend themselves. They can holler and they can run. Does that sound familiar? That sounds like a lot of people. Can I get an amen? amen. They can holler and they can run. What do you see a whole lot of today when things are going on in society? You see a lot of people hollering, a lot of people running around, buying toilet paper mainly. I want you to understand that's not going to help. But the good shepherd will help. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. The Bible says this in Isaiah 40. And chapter, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 40, verse 11. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are, that are with young. I want you to understand this. When David's writing this psalm, it's kind of like when you were back on the playground and the kids were bragging about uh, this or that or the other and they started talking about their daddies and you started talking about your daddy. Well, my daddy this. That's how David was talking about the, about Jesus. Amen. He said, hey, I, wait till you see my shepherd. 
My shepherd's so good. My shepherd's so great. My shepherd's so wonderful. My shepherd can and will do anything I ask because it's in his will. Right. Oh, isn't that awesome? He says in verse uh, in, uh, in Isaiah 53 and 6, it says, All we like sheep are gone astray. I want you to understand, we left to our own devices will always go astray. Amen. That's why you have so much panic in society today. Because their minds are not on the God who can control everything. Their minds are not on the God who has power over every problem. Their minds are only on the problem. Right. So our minds start to go astray. And for our respiratory illness, we go and buy a bunch of toilet paper. Does it make sense? <laughs> for situations that are going on, uh, 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 people are buying up all the meat. Uh, people are going and buying guns because I guess the apocalypse has happened. Let me tell you something. This did not take God by surprise. He knew exactly when this would start. He knows exactly when it'll end. And if you're in his hands, you're not worried. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, give God a little praise. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Bible says in verses 2 and 3, it says, He leadeth me. And then, or he said, he, may, he, he leads me besides the waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness. He leads me. I want you to understand this. He's a guide. Amen. He leads us. He's a shepherd. A shepherd walks in front of the sheep, and the sheep follow after the shepherd. Um, people are so hung up, and I can't tell you how many people have come to me and asked me, what do you think God wants for me? What do you think God wants for my life? What do you think God wants in this situation or that situation? I want you to understand this. Um, God wants you to follow him, number one. He put in his word the things that he wants you to do. Now, your own part, personal calling, whatever that is, God knows what it is. And he's not playing some cosmic game of hide and seek. He'll reveal your calling to you. But first, the Bible says, be saved. Amen. Be sanctified. Be filled with the Holy Spirit and fire. That's right. And be a witness. God gives you four of his wheels right there. What's the point in God showing you your, your, your ultimate calling... Uh, if you're not even fulfilling those first four things. Right. So, so we got to take things a step at a time. And we got to follow the leader. He is a guide. And I, 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 I just, it, it always gets me when people say that they want to find their calling or find their way. Uh, forget finding things. Follow the guide. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. If, if you were traveling to a foreign country, I want you to think about this. If you're traveling to England, uh, to London, England, and... You get in that big, big city, and people talk funny, and uh, there's Big Ben, and there's the House of Parliament, and there's uh, the Thames River, and there's London Bridge, and there's all of these things, and all these things to see. Well, what would you rather? Would you rather somebody come up to you and hand you a big map of the city that has all these little grids, and all these little roads, and all these little points, or would you rather somebody come up that has a British accent that's lived in London all their life and say, hey, I'll show you around. Amen. I can hear you through the screens. You're saying you want the guy, and that's exactly what I would want. I would want somebody that knows the place, that knows everything that's going on about the place, that knows the shortcuts, that knows how to get there the fastest, amen. that knows how to, how to relax, where the best restaurants are. Can I get an amen? amen? That knows all of these things. We want a guy. Well, listen, we've got a great shepherd. He is our guy. He's been this way before. Amen. He knows everything. He knows what you want. He knows what you need. He knows how you are. Can I get an amen? Amen. John 16, 13, the first part of it says this. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you in all truth. The Holy Spirit will guide you in all truth. That is a promise from God. And yes, that's in the New Testament for you, for me today. How will he guide me? Or how will he speak to me is a, is a question I get asked a lot. I want you to understand this. He speaks through a very, a, a varying amount of medias. Uh, sometimes he speaks to you in prayer. And, and a lot of people want that Morgan Freeman voice speaking from behind a cloud or something like that. I want you to understand, God is in that still, small voice a lot of times. Amen. Um, and, 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 and in prayer a lot of times, in real prayer... Where I am just meditating on the Lord. I'm not necessarily asking for things. Giving God a grocery list. I'm just praying. You know what I'm talking about. In that time when I'm alone. And I am just praying. 
I start to hear the voice of God. The Bible says all good things come from the Father of lights. Satan is not going to whisper or say something good in your soul. He doesn't do that. That's not his nature. But God will, and he will guide you, not only in prayer, but sometimes in words from Scripture. Sometimes I'll get the Word, and I'll be reading a passage, and there'll be an issue that's on my mind, and God will lead me to a passage that will give me an answer, and he'll do the same for you. Because God does not see any difference in people. He does not see any difference in color, in race, in, in income, in anything at all. The ground is leveled at the foot of the cross. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank God for it. Not only through prayer, not only through scripture, but through preaching and teaching. Sometimes God, through preaching of, of, of ministers, through teaching of teachers, sometimes through a, a, a radio service, so online stuff, I have had answers come to my prayers. God can use anything he wants to. Not only that, but sometimes through song or sometimes through an impression in my spirit, I know what to do because God is leading me. He's a good shepherd. He doesn't want to see his sheep wandering about. Can I get an amen? amen. Sometimes in God, the counsel, I understand what I just said. Sometimes in godly counsel. Will you say the word godly with me? Godly counsel. And I'm not saying somebody that says, oh, yeah, I know of God. Oh, yeah, I attend church. Easter and Mother's Day. Come on. I'm talking about godly counsel. You know that they are a godly man or a godly woman. And you know that they will give you what the word says, not their opinion. They'll be a real friend because a real friend doesn't just tell you what you want to hear. A real friend tells you the truth and the truth is God's word. Come on. Amen. Amen. The Bible says the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I really don't have an issue with a lot of Christians and I haven't seen a whole lot of Christians with the, with the issue of saying the Lord is my shepherd. But I think a whole lot of Christians have a problem with the I shall not want part. Come on, talk to me. Amen. I think that a whole lot of Christians have a real problem with the I shall not want. Because they don't look at what the shepherd has provided. They're always looking at the other pasture. Can I get an amen? That's right. They'll look at the other sheep and they'll say, well, where's that sheep living? Well, I knew better than that sheep. Why are they eating in those pastures? Uh, I knew better than those sheep. Why do they have a better water supply? Uh, why does that sheep have a new SUV? Why does that sheep have nicer clothes? I want you to understand this. The Lord is my shepherd. And if I'm the sheep I need to be, I shall not want the Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. Not one time has he ever allowed the righteous to be forsaken or his seed begging bread. The question is, are you righteous and are you his seed? And that can't be done by good intentions. It can only be done by following what thus saith the word of God. Can I get an amen? amen. Are you content with the pasture you're in? I'm going to make a statement right now. You might want to write this down. A complaining sheep is a disgrace to the shepherd. Amen. Why would I say something so inflammatory? Well, let me tell you. I want you to imagine how a person that does not believe in God feels when you, being a sheep of the good shepherd, are complaining. You're complaining about this, and you're complaining about having to stay at home, and you're complaining about your wife and your husband. Oh, talk to me now, church, because we got to be locked up with the family. Oh, and it brings out some issues because we can't just go running to those friends that just agree with us. Amen. Family will tell you the truth a lot of times. And sometimes if family ain't saved, they'll tell you a whole lot of stuff that gets on your nerves. But Amen. if God sees fit to put you in that environment, he will also see fit to give you the words you need to say, to minister truth, to minister life to the hearer. Can I get an amen? Amen. Oh, amen. amen. <laughs> Commit contentment. Being content with life <laughs> is not what we have. It's who we know. It's who we follow. If you know Jesus and you follow the Lord, then you will be content. That's right. Can I get an amen? amen? Not only is he the good shepherd, but he's also a friend. Now, you'll notice that after verse 3, the psalmist shifts gears. He talks about a shepherd and a sheep. But now, he's going to a friend. Watch this. Look at verse number 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. 
for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. In the Middle East, on hot days, shepherds will lead the sheep down these steep ravines to the water. Because it's so hot, and sheep generally have a wool coat on, um, they need to be out of the sunlight. But sheep don't have very good eyesight. And they don't like going down those steep ravines because they can't really see that well. And it's all shadowy and dark a lot of times. So they're really skittish. So the shepherd will keep on saying things. He'll call the sheep out. He'll use his words to comfort the sheep. Oh, come on, church. Mm. I want you to understand this. Sometimes I don't like those dark ravines. Sometimes I don't like where the shepherd's leading me. But I got to remember that the greenest grass, it grows in the most fertilized fields. Amen. And if you understand this, um, <laughs> fertilizer doesn't necessarily smell good. Amen. <laughs> fertilizer isn't necessarily the, 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 the scents that candles are made out of. Can I get an amen? But I want you to know this also. A lot of people feel like they're in a lot of fertilizer right now, being locked up, being made to stay at home, having to be away from people. And they can feel like the walls are closing in. But I want you to understand this is an awesome opportunity to have some time with the Lord. You know what? It was just yesterday I was riding down the road. Me and my wife were talking about this. And we would see families that we never see in the yard playing with each other, having fun, going on walks, throwing a football, throwing a frisbee, doing this, that, and the other. They were spending time together. Let me tell you something. God gave us his son, number one, to where our relationship, that needs to be number one, our relationship with God. Then he gave us our families. Come on. Then he gave us our families. Amen. We need to take some time with our families. And listen, God gave you two ears and only one mouth. Take the hint. He wants you to listen. Don't just tell your problems. Your, listen to them. Try to understand them. And grow together as a family. Amen. Grow together. Amen. Amen. Some of your family members are unchristian. They're not saved. They don't know God. They know drama, but they don't know God. <laughs> I just heard some amens. <laughs> I want you to understand this. They will know God by how you live. Amen. They will know God by your conversation. They will know God by your reaction to their action. Come on. That's right. Amen. I want you to understand this. The Bible says that yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's just a shadow. It's just a shadow. You see, when Jesus died, he went and took the keys of death, hell, and and the grave. Right. Hallelujah. We don't have to fear death anymore. Amen. That means that no matter what happens, if I ran out here in traffic, it would be my stupidity, but it would also be my time to go because God would say it's my time to go. It is God's timing that calls us out. It is God's timing that puts us here. And God made you. Maybe you survived a lot of situations, a lot of storms, a lot of sicknesses, a lot of trouble, a lot of trial. God has kept you here for a purpose. It's not to curl up and die. If you're still drawing breath this morning, God has a purpose for you. Amen. And he said, I will not only be your shepherd, I'll be your friend. Amen. I'm going to lead you through. Oh, say it with me, church. Through the shadow of death. Yes. Uh, through the valley of the shadow of death. It, we're not stopping. We're not camping out. We're going through this thing. Things will get better. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. He says he carries a rod and a staff. I always thought the rod was for correction. But in recent study, I want you to understand the staff is not only to aid the shepherd. But it also has a crook to pull the sheep back. And the shepherd by his hands would break the sheep's leg if it kept on running off. And then he would take the sheep and bind them around his neck to keep him closer. Understand what I'm saying here. The staff is for correction and it's for direction. 
But the rod, did a little study on that, it was a stick about this long, and usually they would have some kind of sharp metal out of the end. Before they had the metal, they would just sharpen the stick and they would put points on it. And it would always hang from the shepherd's side. And that was used for the wolves. When the wolves would come around, that shepherd would take that club off and he would go at the wolf. I want you to understand, you got a friend that sticks closer than a brother and that will defend you when the wolves come around. The Bible says Satan goes about as a roaring lion. But that roaring lion, hallelujah, is no match when it comes to the club of the Lord. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? He'll take care of that roaring lion. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Number three and finally, look at verse five. It goes from him being a shepherd to him being a friend, and now he is a host. He is a host. Verse number five says this. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Middle Easterners are renowned, and this was said, this, this, this situation here was set in the Middle East. Middle Easterners are renowned for their hospitality. Uh, they have a code. Uh, Arabs, uh, Israelis, all alike, they have a code that if you are a stranger and you show up at their door, that they will invite you in. Many times uh, people will go over to the Holy Land and people will just invite them in. And they'll invite them in and they will lavish them with, with gifts and with food. They'll put a big spread out there and everything else. And, and, and God's trying to get us to realize that, that he wants to bless us like that. He wants to lavish us with blessings. When I go home and I visit my mom and dad, hey mom and dad, when I go home and visit my mom and dad, no matter what, my mom, my, my mom and dad, they always want to know about us. So, so they're interested in us, but they always want to lavish us with food. As a matter of fact, my mom will constantly try to feed me, and I take advantage of it, praise the Lord, because uh, she's a good cook. And, 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 and I eat, and I eat, and I eat, but she's always worried I'm not going to get enough. Why? She wants to bless me. She wants to bless me. She wants my good. She wants only things for my good. She wants to make me happy. God wants the same thing for you. Do you think that he would invest his only son's life so that you could be miserable, so that you could walk around worried, so that you could walk around upset? No, a thousand times no. Amen. He invested his son's life so you can have happiness, joy, and life eternal. I'm not saying there won't be bad times, but joy has nothing to do with bad times. The Bible says that we've been made endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Joy is based on who you know. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. There is a picture that he's painting with this verse of a person sitting down with a table spread before them. And the, and, 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 and the host keeps on coming by and filling up the glasses, keeps on coming by and bringing more food, more bread, more meat, more vegetables, more dessert, more dessert, more dessert. Yes, more dessert. Keeps on blessing us. Keeps on blessing us. That's the picture that God wants to, to give us right here in this scripture. Abundantly blessed. The Bible says shaken together. Shaken down, pressed down, shaken together and still running over. That's how God wants to bless us. And finally, in verse 6, it says this. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He's making a declaration. He said, no matter what the problem is, he said, I have this shepherd. I have this guide. I have this friend. I have this host. And surely, goodness and mercy will follow me. That's a faith statement. Surely, because I know my shepherd, surely goodness and mercy. Why don't you try to put a smile on your face? Why don't you try to call a neighbor, call a friend, smile at them. Don't complain about a thing. They're going to wonder what's wrong with you, baby. Don't complain about a thing. Just encourage them in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to know <coughs> that we at Solid Rock Full Gospel Church love you. Amen. But more importantly, God loves you. That's right. Some of you are upset, some of you are frustrated, some of you have situations going on. And I just want you to shut your eyes wherever you are right now. You have situations going on in your life. You have issues. You have health issues. You have financial issues. You have personal issues. God knows.
And he's not just concerned about one sheep. He's concerned about us all. He doesn't just love one sheep. He died for us all. And if he's going to do that, he's going to make a way where there was no way. So I'm going to pray. And please, with your head bowed and your eyes closed, if you need to touch the screen, go ahead. Whatever you need to do. But it might be beneficial if you take that hand and just raise it up. Open it up. Raise it up. An open hand is a symbol of giving things away to God. And let's give it to him right now. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to touch each and every person that's listening today. Each and every person, Lord, that's going through a situation, that's going through a hard time, that's going through troubles, that's worried, that's fretful. Lord, come on the scene like never before. Lord, I ask you right now to be that good shepherd that you already are. Lord, let us realize how the great shepherd you are. And come on the scene, Lord Jesus. And by your voice, as we're going down those dark and shadowy places, by your voice, let us follow you. Lord, whether it be through prayer, or by your word, or by your teaching, or preaching, by a song, by that still, small voice inside, by godly counsel, we hear your word. Lord, give us the boldness to follow after you. Because at the end of the valley of the shadow of death, there's still water. It's cool and it's refreshing and there's green grass. Lord, let us keep our mind on you because you keep us in perfect peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Study James chapter 1 and 2 this week. Call somebody different every day. Write down the person that you call and call somebody different. Text them, email them, whatever you got to do. But you'll find that when you're reaching out to other people, your problems become a whole lot smaller. We serve a mighty God. God bless you. See you Wednesday.